My name is John Calderreo, and this is my honors thesis for the University of Florida. Its title is Comparing the Performance Between Native iOS, Swift, and React Native. In 2008, consumers spent 12% online through the mobile devices. Today, that number has jumped to more than 50%, and the number is continuing. Today's mobile phone users spend 90% of their time in applications versus 10% in the browser. This figure is enlightening to companies as they decide whether to have a mobile app developed or just a mobile responsive website. Businesses now need mobile apps in order to stay relevant and reach their intended audiences. One reason for this shift in paradigm is that mobile apps imbue a strong call to action to persuade the user to purchase a product or service from businesses. Another reason is that an app can make the difference between closing the sale or losing the client to a competitor by having the ability to showcase data or portfolio pieces. In 2015, mobile sales were $74 billion, up 32% from 2014. In the next five years, this number is expected to go to $182 billion. Now that we understand the background, the question is whether to go Apple versus Android versus hybrid. Native apps are apps developed for specific operating systems like iOS and Android. They feel right and are fast and smooth. Apple's closed platform, so they have complete control over the software, which means less to worry about when coding. For example, Android comes in many different phones and many different sizes, and many phones have different versions of Android. When coding for Android, you have to take all these variables into consideration. Not so with iOS. There's just a few phone sizes in the iPad. Another point is that iOS devices cost more, so if you're selling your app for money in the App Store, go iOS because they're wealthier owners or more likely to buy your app. However, if your app is free and you're going for brand presence, then go Android because 80% of the market own Android devices. You also get more App Store visibility. You can get Android apps from Google Play Store, the Amazon Store, or any independent app stores. Then there's hybrid, usually written in JavaScript and HTML, not native. The main benefit is that it's written in one code base, so it can be deployed to both Android and iOS. However, they perform much slower since they're essentially web apps wrapped in a native container. React Native, a new hybrid mobile framework by Facebook, aims to solve the previously described problems with hybrid apps. React Native does not make web apps wrapped in native containers. It's written in JavaScript and compiles to code indistinguishable from Objective-C for iOS and Java for Android. This would provide the benefit of hybrid apps without the performance issues. My question is, can Facebook really deliver on React Native's promise of performing on par with native mobile apps? To answer this research question, I will build an app in native iOS with Swift and an identical one in JavaScript with React Native. Then, I will compare the performance of each and graph the results. Learning Swift and building the app. Swift is one of my new favorite languages, and it was easy to learn because of my background in Java and C++. I watched video lectures on Udemy.com for about three weeks, but Coco Touch, the iOS framework, still kind of confused me. And some of the code the Udemy instructor told us to just memorize and not worry about what it did. I didn't really like that at all. But I still found it enjoyable and I finished the app. And you can see my code at GitHub. And here is the Swift app. Facebook login. I've already logged in before. Profile picture, name, and email all gets pulled from the uh, Facebook server. Add task by eggs. Slide to delete. Page view. I have three different controllers controlling this, but you can slide infinitely. Then the last one's maps, and it just zooms into the location. It shows a little blip. Uh, this is a simulator, so the location is California, but that's it for the Swift app. Here's some of the Swift code. Here's the storyboard. First, second, third, and fourth tabs. Here is the page view controller. Here's the separate controllers. Here is the Login, here's the Facebook SDK, for the login button delegate we have to use. Um, here's the actual app delegate part. Here's where you set everything up 
the windows I had to uh, give it a blue color, the top. Learning React Native and building the app. Learning JavaScript was a bit harder than Swift since I hadn't used its syntax, but I find the language to be incredibly freeing. I also learned React Native through lectures at Udemy.com. React Native was incredibly overwhelming at first, especially since I had to learn JSX, which was XML syntax with JavaScript. But after a week, I fell in love and I really enjoyed using it. Now, unlike in Swift, every line of code makes sense. You can see my code at GitHub. React Native app, profile tab, login with Facebook. Okay, to do list app by eggs. I couldn't find the slide left to delete, uh, so I double click because this is a uh, React Native is pretty new, so some stuff you can't find. Uh, page view tab, and then the maps tab where it'll view into our location, and that's it for the React Native app. Here's some React Native code. Here's the index Android JS and the index iOS JS. They both point to app.js, which is the beginning of the app, so you know Android and iOS both have the same exact code. Here you can see we're creating the tabs all in JavaScript. And um, here's where the screens are score stored, so each tab is in here. I don't have time to go through each one, but that's the basic layout. I'll be using Apple Instruments to measure the performance of the apps in three categories, CPU, GPU, and memory. In each tab, I will be measuring one task. In tab 1, logging into Facebook successfully. For tab 2, adding and deleting a to-do list item. For tab 3, swiping through all three colored page views, and waiting for location to be found in the fourth tab. I'll be using my phone plugged into the, into the computer running Apple Instruments, so I can use the real apps instead of the simulator. For the CPU, the y-axis goes up to 200% because there's two cores in the iPhone 6's A8 processor, and you have to add 100% for each. My sample interval for CPU usage is one millisecond. Each millisecond while I am performing the task, a measurement will be recorded by the Time Profiler tool. Then I will take the average and add it to the chart. For the GPU, the y-axis goes up to 60 frames per second. The more frames used, the better. Each second while I'm performing the tab's task, a measurement will be recorded by the Core Animation tool. We'll take the average and chart it. For the memory, the y-axis will go as high as my highest measurement. My sample interval for CPU usage is 1 millisecond. Each millisecond while I'm performing the task, a measurement will be recorded by the allocations tool. I will take the average and chart it. Here's an example of the time profiler tool. See, I'm using on my phone, React Honors app, and I'm using something that's pretty CPU heavy. Here's an example of the core animation tool. I'm using it with Snapchat and it's pretty much running smoothly and that's because this is an optimized app. Here's an example of the allocations tool. I'm running on Swift Honors app. It's going up and up and up and up. Finding is data for CPU. In my CPU measurements Swift utilized CPU better in tabs page view and maps, and React Native utilized it better in tabs profile and to-do list. Swift wins the CPU category at 13.68% more efficient. Findings data for GPU. In the GPU measurements, Swift won the profile and page view tabs by running more smoothly at higher frames per second, and React Native won the to-do list and maps tabs. React Native barely wins the GPU category overall by 0.95 frames per second. Findings data for memory. In the memory measurements, Swift won only profile tab by 0.02 megabytes, while React Native utilized memory more efficiently in the other three tabs, especially in maps. Overall, React Native used 61.96 megabytes less memory and won the category overall. Conclusion. I built two apps, 
one in Swift and one in React Native, that were both almost identical in appearance and function. As you can see from my data, they were also almost identical in performance. React Native is the framework of the future. It has so many advantages and so few disadvantages. It's written in JavaScript, has one code base that can be deployed to Android and iOS, and it's faster and cheaper to produce. I can also infer from the data I collected that React Native won two out of the three categories, and it outperformed Swift by a small margin, especially so in memory utilization. React Native is the framework that native mobile developers have always feared. Thank you.